After winning top chef, Kristen Kish has continued to cook up magic. Now she's showing her appetite for adventure by taking us to some remote eateries in the new Nat Geo series, Restaurants at the End of the World. Take a look. I'm headed out on a journey. I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. To places like this, this, and this. Wow. Look at that. To restaurants so remote that their chefs face more challenges in a day. <laughs> See what it takes to get a good product? Than most chefs face in a lifetime. Oh my God! And yet they turn these obstacles into once in a lifetime meals. And Kristen is alive and well and joins us now. <laughs> Good to see you. Likewise. Listen, we were just talking before this started, like this is a dream job for anyone who loves food, especially mm -hmm. for a chef like you who knows what to do with everything. But how did this whole show come about, the idea? You know, it all started from you being a, a restaurant person as well, or former. Uh, you know, the, the idea of family meal and sharing a yeah. meal and a shared experience over the same food. And so it started with the seed of an idea, National Geographic, I got a hold of it and obviously now I'm rappelling down waterfalls and going to where polar no. bears are. So it starts, it, the, the core and the heart of the show is just human connection over food. Yeah, I love that. And so how did you find these places um, yeah. and how did you even begin to choose? Because I'm sure there's so many yeah. that deserve kind of the spotlight. I mean, if that's any reason. I, I, For season two. Exactly. <laughs> is to, there are so many amazing people yeah. that want to tell their stories that I would love to learn and experience. But we, you know, you know, we have a wonderful creative department. Um, you know, they're organizing schedules, making sure that we can go and do these things with them. And we t we really do try to time it with an actual event that they're they're planning. Right. So we're leading into a real life opportunity and event for them. Yeah, and I mean these chefs face a lot of obstacles. They I mean, do. they are remote. They're at the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And so they don't have the conveniences, the appliances that you would normally have at your access to, exactly. to cook these amazing meals. Mm -hmm. So what was kind of the it's a, a task that you had to do that you never wanted to again. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, if there's one thing that has challenged me in my professional and personal life, it is having done this show. Yeah. Uh, I've realized more that. More than Top Chef. Which more is than a Top Chef, that's itself. right. <laughs> I want to explore more. I want to eat new, different things that I've never tried before. Yeah. I want to experience new people, and I want to do all the physical activities that I didn't think I was capable of doing. So yeah. I am all gung ho for everything that they want to throw at me. Yeah, and so what was like the most. The thing that's sticking with you the most in this whole first season, like maybe something that you tasted yeah. that was amazing or just an experience you had. I mean, I cried in every single episode out of pure gratitude and kindness <laughs> yeah. that these people showed me and patience that they showed me. Yeah. Um, but there's this, uh, there's this alcohol from a long story short, a feeding sack of a bird that they took out, infused it in a young gin, and we made a cocktail with glacier ice out of it. Oh Very God. much as far <laughs> north as we could go to the North Pole. I mean, in the places that you're going to, I mean, there's a place that has more polar bears than people. That's right. And, I mean, and, and were these things that you had on your list of places you wanted to go and explore, or was it just like, just an amazing happy accident <laughs> that you know I never thought television was going to be for me I never thought exploring the world in this way was ever yeah. going to be for me it's nothing that I ever you know could ever dream up myself and so the fact that life has led me to a place where I can sit in this space share this opportunity with people that watch it yeah. um, and be able to take away all these different life lessons is really just I mean a, a, a dream come true yeah um, and I'm surprising myself every day yeah and I know you have Arlo Gray in Texas but if That's you right. could open a restaurant in any remote location in the world now that you've been all over the place <laughs> doing this do you have something in mind like would you would you take that on you know maybe in my like retirement years say, sure. it's not your lifestyle at exactly this point. and yeah. I'm just they have this tenacity and grit that I don't think I have I haven't had to develop it. Yeah. So I will happily go and be in their hands and yeah. I'll safely do my restaurant in Austin. <laughs> Amazing though to push you to the limits and yeah. know what you're what you're capable mm -hmm. of doing. And you can catch restaurants at the end of the world Tuesdays on National Geographic and all episodes are out now on Disney Plus. Kristen, thanks so much. Thank you.